Good evening and welcome to the Tasmanian Premier League show for a wrap-up of all the action from around the state. Joining me again, as usual, is co-host Walter Pless. Good evening, Jeremy. How are you? Good, and yourself? Very well, thanks. That's the way a bit to get through tonight. Yes, a lot of cup games. Always interesting. To my left, we've got the acting coach of Newtown Eagles, uh, Stephen Pitchford. Good evening, Jeremy and Walter. Good evening, Steve. Great to have you here. And I guess we may as well get straight into the action. There's a fair bit to get through. Yes, there were some exciting games and lots of goals. So the first match we're going to take a look at is the Friday night clash between Kingborough Lions and Glenorchy Knights. You were out there, Walter, what did you make of the match? Well, Kingborough started pretty badly, as they have done in their last two games, and they managed to come back. Last week they came back from a 2-0 deficit to win. This time, amazingly enough, they had a four-goal deficit within 28 minutes, and yet they came back to take the match into extra time. We just saw Eagle opening the account for the Knights there, a, a handball in the box. Uh, the Knights awarded a penalty and he had no problems popping that away. That's about his third penalty. He's pretty expert at those and he scored another hat-trick this evening, so he's certainly uh, knocking in the goals. We just saw a cracking shot there from Janko Begovic. A great shot, yeah. A square pass from the left. He hit it first time. The goalkeeper didn't have a chance. Knights, uh, what did you make of them? Were they... I mean, they've got a couple of lucky breaks here. We just see that then a little mistake in the back line, very costly for the Lions. Well, I think it's symptomatic of Kingborough. They are very poor in defence, and as I've said, they let teams take a 2-0 and even a 4-0 lead, and then for some reason they're able to fight back, which doesn't say much for their opponents either. And the Knights in particular, they seem to uh, fall behind. We see another soft goal conceded there, Steve. Yeah, it's a habit when you're at, uh, at the bottom of the ladder, you have the ball in possession and it uh, comes up the other end and a soft goal and you're punished for it. And this has happened to uh, Kinger in a number of their games. You see a, a chance go begging there, I guess, Walter. Yes, it was Begovic too. <laughs> <laughs> and a costly mistake here as well, allowed Kingborough back in the match. Yes, once they pulled one... Uh, goal back, anything could have happened. And in fact, I was sitting next to Steve watching this game and he was predicting just that. Yeah, well, they've got a bit of a fighting spirit and, the, and coming off the back of their 5-4 win against Metro, um, they obviously got a roll on. What was happening down here, Steve? Uh, can you fill us in? Yeah, look, I think uh, the uh, trainer from uh, King Reliance was giving the referee his views on what had happened or what should have happened. Uh, I think he did spend a little bit of time behind the fence at one stage. And we see another mistake there. Peter, should he have punched? What should he have done? Well, he should have punched it further. Um, he, he was a bit of a worry that night. Um, he tended to punch, he missed punches, and he might have been punished even more. There's another example. Well, maybe Tony Desjali probably should have cleared that, maybe stepped up and said, that's mine, I'm going to hit it clear. True, but it's up to the goalkeeper to yell instructions, and it didn't look there as if the defenders were communicating with each other. Ross Hinckley, a cracking free kick there. Great free kick, with the left foot. Beckham like. Then we see uh, the player coach uh, seal the match, and he's raised the bar for celebrations, you could say. Mate, it's been the story of our season so far. We can't string 90 minutes together. Um, but we'll, 41st, 45 was great. It's just our consistency. We're going to have to work at that train. The last half an hour and extra time, we turned it back on again. So, yeah, it's a bit of work to be worked out, find out what's going on with our consistency for the full 90 minutes. I think there's a few tight legs out there for the boys, so nah. We'll take the win and move on now. Yeah, heartbreaking for the boys from the point of view that, you know, um, you can't give a side a full goal head start. But we worked really, really hard to get back into it and probably looked like the winning side until extra time. They were the better side in extra time. I don't know. Go going forward, we're looking promising, but unfortunately, when it comes to defending at the moment, we're just making errors and getting punished for them. So really a match that could have gone either way, and do you think uh, worthy winners? I think the Knights deserve to win in the end, but Kingborough considered themselves to be extremely unlucky. I mean, to come back from 4-0 down and still lose, it's pretty hard. <laughs> The next game we're going to take a look at is between Hobart Olympic and Devonport City up at the Athletic Centre. And a bit of a scrappy affair? It was a bit of a scrappy affair. Olympic had nine players missing, Jeremy. I couldn't believe when the coach said that. But looking through the list, he was quite correct. So they've got two pretty strong squads, really. How did that, this squad differ than the one that we probably saw the week before? Well, they had some of their playmakers missing this week, people like Jakanovic and Nick Meredith, and I think that cost them dearly. 
and their two strikers, Grillas and Backhouse, were off their game, and Buellis, the third player, they were off their game. They had a few chances, couldn't put them away. It seems to be a problem the, uh, the Blues have this year. Their defence um, went to sleep. I don't know what happened there, but McKenna, a very easy finish. Yeah, McKenna combined pretty well with their fullback, Chilcott. Chilcott set McKenna up for that first goal, and then later in the game, McKenna sent up, set up Chilcott for the second one. You could probably say McKenna's um, been the basis of most of their success, Steve. For a large number of years, McKenna's always been a, a good goal scorer um, and very hard to stop, but he does seem to have had a, a reasonable amount of space in this game. What, did, uh, what sort of game did Devonport play on the weekend, Walter? We don't see a lot of Devonport. No, they had a very young side, Jeremy. They are in a rebuilding phase. Snowy Compain, one of the stalwarts of the club, he tends to play a few home games, but he doesn't travel anymore with the team. And his absence was crucial, although they managed to recover from that. Andy Howe used to be a top midfielder, and he's in goal now. So they've got a very young team, and this 2-0 win was a credit to them. Bullis, what a cracking shot, hit the crossbar, lucky, unlucky not to go in. I must compliment the officials in that one. The linesman didn't give a goal. He was adamant that the ball had come down and hit the line. And the video replay clearly shows that, so very good officiating. A couple of chances gone begging there late in the game for Olympic arm. Maybe should have taken those. Yes, certainly. Um, they did have some clear-cut chances, but as I said earlier, they were off their game. There's Backhouse there, um, who missed that one. Costly turnover here, though, a little bit. He's a young player, Sakira. It's probably his first senior game. Um, would have been a little bit nervous, but you can't give away balls like that. Inexperience, I think, but you've got to look at the other defenders there. There was still a chance for them to recover, and they just allowed Chilcott to run through and score. See Bullis again here. They, they the good thing about Olympic this year, I think, is they, they really don't give up, even though they are a bit tested at the back, they'll still play out the full 90 minutes. Yes. Steve, a comment on uh, Steve Fagg refereeing. Was that his first senior game? It's certainly one of his first uh, Premier League games at this level, but he's been refereeing for a number of years and uh, was well capable of looking after a match like this. Yeah, he was quite pleased at the end when I spoke to him that he didn't have to issue any yellow cards at all. Yeah, it's very good when you can finish a game like that. When you come down to Hobart all the way for the course, it's nice to get a victory. I think that, you know, we've got a young team, as I said, there's probably six under 18s there. I think if we'd take more chances in the first half, the game might have been over a little bit earlier. We had a few chances in the second half. and um, So, yeah, no, we're going okay. We're progressing well. A bit of disappointing, but it's kind of expected. I mean, I've got nine regular senior players out of the squad. I mean, we had chances late in the game that we should have buried, but over and all, we deserved it. Olympic now out of the cup, I guess they can just focus on winning the title now, Walter. Yeah, and they've slipped down the table uh, a little bit in recent weeks, so they'll be able to concentrate fully on the league campaign now, Jeremy.